Welcome back to The Real Deal on NPD with Myra. Narcissistic relationships can really mess you up, even long after they're over. Many of us have been through the agony of being deliberately hurt by a narcissist once it's all said and done. They want to keep the pain going after the relationship's over. Not like a normal relationship where you go your separate ways. No, this narcissist wants to keep it going. So we need to figure out, you know, why they want to do this. What are some of the reasons? Um, because it's going to help you to figure out how best to heal. In today's video, we're going to dive into the 10 reasons why narcissists might want to mess with your head at the end of the relationship and how you can start to move forward from all that drama. It's time to leave the circus and the clowns right where they are. So number one, empowerment through pain. So look, they thrive. They like it. They thrive on the power that they feel when they see you in distress. They feel a sense of power and control to see you hurt or upset or crying. Uh, they like it. Okay? They brag on it. Makes it feel good. Number two, punishment for defiance. I said defiance. Yes. You challenge them. Uh-huh. You challenge their authority and that triggers their need to punish you. You did not meet their unrealistic expectations, so they gotta punish you for whatever you did not do, all right? Or whatever you questioned. You might have questioned that narcissist. Number three, retaliation for rejection. So they feel abandoned. They wanna lash out. They wanna inflict the pain that they feel. They feel abandoned and rejected, and they wanna hurt you in return for making them feel this way. Now look here, they may have discarded you, yet they still wanna get, get you for abandoning them. Mm, they even wanna be part of the harem. Number four, empathy deficit. So look, they don't care about you. They're causing this harm on purpose. They lack empathy. They don't understand. Uh, but they do know they get pleasure out of seeing you in pain. Number five, envy and sabotage. These narcissists are the most jealous people in the world. They're jealous of your success. They're jealous of your joy and they aim to bring you down. Okay, they wanna humble you. That's what they call it. I wanna humble that person. Okay, we wanna bring her down a notch or two. Mm -hmm. They wanna bring you down to their level. They want to drag you down to the depths of hell right with them. And the answer to that narcissist is no. All right? Understand that. Number six, dominance display. So they want to be superior. They want to assert control over you. They don't have control over their own lives, their own kids, their own jobs, but they want to demonstrate dominance over you. Number seven, ego boost. They have so many insecurities and in that, you know, they get a temporary relief in their suffering when they're able to make you suffer. Yeah, so that boosts their little old fragile ego. And I don't mean little ego, I mean that big ego. Number eight, projection of insecurities. They have so many insecurities and they wanna project those onto you. They're telling people you're, you're so fearful, you're so codependent, you're on drugs, you're doing this, that, and the other. All the things that they're doing, all the fears and insecurities that they have. Number nine, thrill of chaos. So they want to start up an emotional storm and create drama in your life because they enjoy seeing emotional reactions and they thrive on chaos and your chaos and drama. They like that. Their life is boring, but uh, you know, they get a little joy out of making some mess happen in your life mm -hmm. instead of focusing on their own life that needs a lot of attention. Number 10, sadistic satisfaction. So inflicting pain gives them a sense of satisfaction. It's twisted. They enjoy inflicting pain. Yes, they get satisfaction and control on that, you know? They're all up in your business, yet they need to get some business of their own. Maybe take care of the kids, maybe tend to their house, you know, all those things that they need to focus on. Maybe go get some counseling. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. So look, it's important for you to recognize these behaviors and to protect yourself from further harm in dealing with a narcissist, especially at the end of the relationship, because they're trying to inflict some more harm on you, and they like to brag about it to their other narcissist friends. Mm -hmm. So healing from narcissistic abuse, it is a complex journey, but you have to start by acknowledging the impact that it has on your mental health. You need to seek support from a professional who specializes in narcissistic trauma. Set boundaries and cut ties if you can, okay? Because that's crucial. Surround yourself with supportive people. Sometimes it's hard to find those people. But you have to prioritize self-care through activities like exercise and mindfulness and meditation, you know, just taking care of yourself, doing the things you enjoy doing. You have to rebuild your self-esteem. You have to remind yourself that you absolutely deserve respect and kindness and love and attention, all those things that the narcissist said that you didn't deserve. Healing takes time. And with patience and proactive steps, you can overcome the pain.
and you can embrace a brighter future. You can. You absolutely can have a better life after narcissistic abuse. Understanding why these narcissists want to hurt you is the key to reclaiming your life. You protect yourself, you prioritize your well being, and you continue your journey of healing and continue this conversation. If you found this information helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. And I want to thank you so much for joining us in this journey.